determinant, and that will tell you max, min, or saddle point. Well, the, well, this is a method, yeah. That, um, yeah, so Steve gradient zero. The only, the only variable here is what's the algebra going to be like for that, um, which, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to make that bad. Um, and then, um, yeah, you're just plugging and chugging over partial derivatives. Now I'm going to do Lagrange multipliers. Um, so finding a max min function, Subject to constraints. For example, just be one constraint. So that will make it a little less arduous algebraically. Okay. So this is 11.8, number 9. Uh, so your function is. x squared plus y squared plus z squared in your constraint. So, so you have to find the max min of this subject to this constraint x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth must be equal to one. All right. Now, so what you do is first you need the gradients of both. So not much going on here. We have two x, two y, two z. And then the gradient of g is going to be four um, x cubed, four y cubed, four z cubed. And then you need to set up the system gradient of f is equal to lambda gradient of g. And and also you have to add in the constraint. So you have to solve this system. So here there will be three equations. Here there will be one equation. And you need to solve it for x, y, z, and lambda. So if it's a, if a function of three variables and one constraint, that's a, so a total of four equations to solve. All right. so, so what the system looks like in this case is 2x is equal to 4 lambda x cubed to y is equal to 4 lambda y cubed to z is equal to 4 lambda z cubed and then you also have a constraint x to the 4 plus y to the 4 plus z to the 4 is equal to 1. Alright. So, uh, so we need to look at these equations and see um, it's, it, this word of a problem gets to be kind of a pain because it all depends on what equations you actually end up with, um, how nasty the algebra turns out to be. Um, and you got to be careful not to overlook any cases. This is what happened, this is a challenge on the first exam where there are different ways you can go in finding a solution. One will lead to a dead end and one actually would lead to a solution, but um, it might be overlooked. Um, and actually this problem gives you an example of that. Um, so what you could do to find a solution of this equation, one possibility is x equals zero. That would satisfy it. But then, if you do the same thing for the other equation, say, oh, y equals zero, z equals zero, that doesn't satisfy this. So that, so that can help you, but then you've got to find some other way of solving for y and z values, because you've got to make sure that all four of these are satisfied. So, so we need to look at other possibilities. So if x is non-zero, 
we can divide through by x. So what we get, and I'll cancel out twos as well. So we're going to have one is equal to two lambda x squared. So really, those are the possibilities that we um, have to consider. So, so x is going to be equal to plus or minus 1 over square root of 2 lambda. All right. And what that also means is Lambda has to be positive. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, so these are the possibilities for x. All right, so let's just summarize here. 0 plus or minus 1 over square root of 2 lambda. And then for y and z, We have these possibilities as well. Okay. <clears throat> now, we don't have a value for lambda yet, um, so we need to see, we need to take these possibilities and plug them in here, and that will help narrow down the possible value of uh, lambda. Now, so here's what we could do. We cannot have x, y, and z all equal to 0. But we could have any two of these equal to 0. And then we solve for the third one. So for example, the possible solutions. We could have x equals 0 y equals 0. And then here we can set lambda equal to 1 half to make this whole thing plus or minus 1. And then this is satisfied. So, so z turns out to be plus or minus 1. And that means lambda is equal to 1 half. So that works. That satisfies everything. And you could get the same situation if you, if you set any other two equal to 0. Like you set x and z equal to 0, and y turns out to be plus or minus 1. So you can always do that. All right, so. There's some solutions right there. And what you can do is you can plug these into f. The result's going to be the same no matter what. So in this case, f turns out to be equal to 1. So this is a candidate for a max or min. We don't know which yet because we've got to look at the other possibilities. Um, so another possibility is maybe only one of these is equal to zero. So for instance, let's say x is equal to zero, and y and z are non-zero. Well, in that case, um, we have to make sure that uh, whatever you get when you raise to the fourth power is equal to a half. So y is equal to the fourth root of one half, plus or minus, and z is the same thing. Okay. So, <clears throat> and the reason I get this, I'm, notice I'm not bothering to find a value of lambda, I don't really need to. I'm just going by this, because this tells me that if I set x equals zero, and I say that y and z have to be non-zero, they have to be the same 
or minus of e 